Hello Africa and welcome to Impact Stories on AAU TV. This program seeks to celebrate academic mentors on the continent of Africa. My name is Irene Dufiade and I'm going to be your host for today's conversation. Before I introduce my guest, this is a little bit about him. He is the president of the AIT, that is Accra Institute of Technology. And he is a world renowned professor of computer science, an educator and also an author. He has received several awards, including a meritorious award for distinguished service to the field of computer science in 1998. In 1999, he was also awarded the Outstanding People of the 20th Century Medal by the International Biogeographical Centre, Cambridge, UK, for his contribution to university education in general and to the field of computer science in general. We'll go for a short break and when we come back, I will introduce to you the man behind this accomplishment. Do stay tuned. Are you an institution or individual? Do you intend to organize a memorable event to be archived for future reference? Then look no further than AAU Studios because it's your best bet with our spacious studio and state-of-the-art media equipment such as 4K Panasonic video cameras, KinoFlow lights, assorted microphones, live streaming equipment, among others, you are sure to get the best of productions. Visit us at Trinity Avenue, East Ligon, adjacent the National Accreditation Board, or contact the AAU Studios via the following email addresses, info at aau.org, aautv at aau.org, or ransford at aau.org. Alternatively, you can call us on plus 233-244-736280. Welcome back and welcome to Impact Stories on AAU TV. And I'm privileged here to have with me mm -hmm. Professor Clement Jijuno. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Pro, for today. It has been amazing and wonderful to have you here you. to discuss about your life, mm -hmm. what happened and how you got here. Yeah. yeah, because it's no mean achievement being the president of mm -hmm. one of the biggest institutions in Ghana here. Mm -hmm. And so, Prof, how are you doing? Well, let's start with how Corona has affected us. How are you generally faring and how is AIT? Well, uh, thanks for the opportunity to have a chat with you. Yes. Um, it's a privilege and an honor. Well, we are doing well. Um, AIT at the very beginning of the, of the pandemic, mm. we, we got prepared uh, both uh, to secure our campus. Right. Um, look at the issue of the hygiene and so forth. And then uh, we were lucky that we have been uh, using technology to support teaching and learning for 10 years. Right. So we, AIT is actually two university systems. Mm. We have the Open University. Right. We, all, we run our, our postgraduate programs, masters and PhD. And then we have the traditional conventional university. Mm where we run our undergraduate programs. Mm -hmm. Now, because we have been doing this for 10 years, using the technology for the open university and even for the regular universities, it was quite easy for us to, to fine tune one or two of our systems and go, then go online. So, right. so, so far as our university education and learning is concerned as a, as a university, I think, we, we are on top of it. That's the COVID great. have not actually, but in fact, mm -hmm. the COVID have given us opportunity to, 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 to improve some of our uh, learning delivery methods and right. systems and processes. Right. So we are doing quite well. Right. Yes. So let's go back a little bit, back yes. to memory lane. We want to know about you. We want to know about your childhood. Yes. We want you to talk about where you grew up, your yes. siblings, and then probably your parents. Very good. Yeah. Well, I was born in Accra, mm. a suburb of Accra. Uh, I think this, since this is going international, mm. I would say Accra Ghana. is the capital of uh, Ghana. Yeah. Born here, where we are now, that is Accra, and got my early education in Accra. Mm. Um, up to the secondary level, 
right. where I went to another part of the country to do my CIS form, that is second day Takrari. Mm. And then immediately after that, I went abroad. So okay. I didn't have my university education in Ghana. Right. I have it abroad. Mm. On the issue of parents, they are late. Uh, my father passed away at the age of 98. Wow. And my mother at the age of 92. Wow. Uh, so <laughs> they, they, they lived their life. They lived. Yeah, they yeah. lived their life. Siblings, uh, the last count, I think we, we are 17. Whoa. Uh, I'm the first uh, son. Okay. Uh, my father had three wives. Okay. I'm the first son. Uh, so that means responsibility. A lot. Um, all my siblings are all up and running and doing something somewhere. Mm. So that briefly is, is, is my early childhood and, uh, mm. and my parents. Yeah, so do you remember vividly what was so unique about your childhood or an event that happened in your childhood that you can say, okay, I remember this thing and so you can talk about it a little bit? Now, my childhood uh, was split into two. Right. I spent a very, very early days Early, early years with my parents mm. in Accra. But at some stage, I had to go and live with my uncle. Uh, I think the early days were quite very enjoyable ones. Mm. In those days, you don't have television. So the community must create their own entertainment. Mm. So my our house was the center, was the focus of the community. Right. So there are a lot of dancing and drumming in, in, in our house uh, and uh, I was in the thick of it. Uh, so every time there said some dancing and drumming you will see me there. Right. So I enjoyed that childhood. Yeah. I was quite popular in the area <laughs> for, for, for dancing. Yeah. And then when I went to my uncle it was a different life altogether. Yeah. So I think my very very early childhood in Accra was a very enjoyable one. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and so Growing up, just um, going through to school, yes. who were some of the people you were looking up to? And these particular people, do they influence your life and then sometimes the career or the choice of decisions that you make? Well, at a very early age, mm -hmm. I mean, the primary school, I was informed by our head teacher, mm -hmm. Mr. Seshi, if I remember, if I can remember, I recall was quite a very disciplined man. Mm. And you know, this day the head teacher were quite white, quite short, and quite shirt. It's always looked neat to me. Yeah. <laughs> and he has a, a bald head. And we always used to say that if, to have a bald head means that you're very intelligent. Right. So we thought our head teacher was very intelligent. Mm. So it did influence my early uh, childhood. One reason is because he had a lot of confidence in me. Right. I recall one time he called me to his office. Mm. There was a family with two kids there, uh, two children. I think they want they are applying for admission. Our school was our primary school was an experimental school. Right. And Okwami Kuma set us on experimental schools, which are special schools. We do our common entrance at class six, right. where others do theirs mm. in form two, yeah. two years later. So it was uh, quite a, a top school. So this, I think this family want to bring their kids to our, our school. Mm. And the headmaster was telling that this is a, a high standard school. And he was asking them, which class do you want your kid? I think they were going to go to class four. And he said, let me bring my class two, one of my class two people. And see right. If, well, yeah, so they, he called me and uh, asked me a couple of questions mm -hmm. and answer it and those kids could not answer it. Mm. So you see, we are from class two child is better than the <laughs> Your class, class four. four child. Right. So the headmaster decided to jump me to class four straight away. It was mm. quite interesting. That was quite memorable. Mm. And because of that confidence I decided that I have to continue to, to keep to, to keep myself on track. Right. That was important for yeah, me. Yeah it was. It, yes. it built your confidence too you receiving some of the highest awards. Yes. But what was the reason of um, not continuing in Ghana, but rather going outside to do your first degree? I think 
the influence came from where I went to my sixth form, mm. St. John's School, second day. Right. St. John's School is, is a Catholic school run by the Holy Cross brothers who came from the U.S. Yeah. I think St. John's, there this culture that everybody wants to go to abroad. Okay. Take the SAT, the TOEFL, mm -hmm. and then uh, move on. So it was a big deal to, 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 to go to to do your university education abroad. Right. So when I got there, I also got caught into that culture. And I sat my SAT, my TOEFL, and did well. I actually got a scholarship to go to university, the State University of New York Maritime College, right. when I was in lower six. Wow. So Just lower six? Lower six, you know, six form is two, yeah, is two yeah. lower and in upper. upper. Yeah. After APA, you mm -hmm. do your exam before you go to university. Yes, so I got admission to go to this university, the scholarship, mm. when I was in Lower mm. uh, And then I told my teachers, look, I've already got admission abroad. I don't so see I why I should continue mm. to finish my CIS from here. They said, no, since you're here, try and finish it. That was a good decision. Okay. So I continued and finished and finished my A-level. Mm. And then... Uh, I was ready to leave. So, right. so, so I, di I didn't even apply to go to university in Ghana So because I got a scholarship. So I left. But is, was it to the same school or was it to a different one? Uh huh. Mm. That's another story. <laughs> That's another story. Yeah. Uh, before, I've, when I finished my sixth form, I had a chance to travel mm -hmm. to another African, West African country, I will not mention it, for a short while. And then I had a, the chance to come by, by ship. Okay. The black, one of the Black Star Line. Black ship. Star Line. We spent three days on 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 on, 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 on sea. Okay. And when I arrived at Takradi, I changed my mind. Mm. I don't think I want to spend my life. On as sea, a, as, as a, a, mari a marine engineer. Yeah, marine engineer. So I decided to change course, and uh, instead went to the to the UK mm. and I was lucky the scholarship I got to go to the U university in the, in the US they were willing to transfer that scholarship to the UK that is amazing yeah they say either UK Canada or oh, the US. US and because I finished my A level mm -hmm. so I used my A level results to, to get admission in there. so that's how I happened to go abroad yeah, and so just moving straight from um, Ghana to UK. Yes. And culturally, how was it for you? The dynamics are different, we know, when we go yes. outside. So how did you cope? How were you able to cope with the different, the two kind of lifestyles and then getting comfortable to continue your education? Well, it, it, as you may be aware, being an African or a black person in, in, in Europe was, was a tough life. Yeah. But at that time, in those days, most of the Africans who travel out to Europe, it's mainly for education. Yeah. Not to go and hustle. Stay, yeah. So, because the, the majority of the blacks who were born there, the system is such that they never actually had a chance mm. to move beyond mm. the secondary school. Right. So being a university in the UK, you have only few blacks and Africans. Um, that also means that there's a lot of expectations uh, to, to do well. Mm -hmm. um, apart from that, the wider society uh, the issues of uh, being black, they mm. are always there, but you go through it. Yeah. So, uh, I finished my university, my first degree in the UK. And uh, since I've already decided I want to be an academic, right. I made up my mind to do my PhD. Mm. Uh, uh, I wasn't planning to work in industry. Okay. Uh, computer science was quite a new subject at that time. Right. So I was lucky again, got a scholarship to do my PhD straight from my bachelor's degree. Right. At Trinity College Dublin, yes. Uh, so 
Okay. I left the UK and went to Ireland, Dublin Trinity College. Right. Where I did my PhD. PhD in computer science. Yes, and that's where I got the, the next person who influenced my life. Right. That's my professor. Right. Yes. Yeah. I wanted to know why were you comfortable coming back after the PhD? Because as she said, when, when we look at um, UK and then we look at Ghana, Yes. In terms of development, in terms to access to things, yes. it's very easier over there. Mm -hmm. And you had tasted that life from first year, first degree to PhD. Yeah. So why did you come back to Africa? Africa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a long story. Mm -hmm. I, I, I actually worked there. Right. When I was doing my PhD, mm -hmm. I was also appointed a lecturer. Mm. So when I was at Trinity College Dublin, I was actually working. Mm. So it was not just doing my PhD. PhD, yeah. And uh, when I finished my PhD, I continued working there mm. um, as a faculty member. Right. Uh, and because of my area, and also those who at the beginning of the internet, I also had a, a lot of chance to do a lot of consultancy work for the UN. Mm. And that involved coming to Africa right. to promote the use of the internet in African universities. So whilst I was in Europe, I was, I was coming to Africa no. and to have a taste of, 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 of home. Um, I worked there for a couple of years. I think that is actually where I built my career. Right while still uh, having opportunity to come home mm. and go to other African countries. Right. Then I decided it's time to come home. Mm. Uh, I know some colleagues at that time say, why do you want to do that? Right. You are in a top university, you are building a career. Exactly. You are comfortable here, why do you want to do this thing? I think the point I made at that time is that the institution, the university I, I was, was over 400 years old. Mm. In that part of the world, the first university was Oxford, the right. second was Cambridge, the third was Trinity. Right. And I said, well, these institutions were built by human beings. They were built by these people, which we had to build our own institutions. Mm. And I cannot build our institution here. I have to go home. And uh, I was lucky. I got uh, Commonwealth uh, Technical Assistance uh, Fellowship right. uh, to go to Zimbabwe for two years. That eased me into Africa. Right. I was there with other two India professors where we started a, a program of Masters in Computer Science. Mm. So after that contract, I said, look, you know what? Move my things to Accra. Yeah. So that is how I came home. Right. And so coming back, Yes. Let's come back to Africa. What, yes. what was the vision you had when you were coming back? That this is what I want to do. This is what I want to be remembered for. Yes. What was the vision and what was kicking you that I need to come and then come do my own in Africa? Yes. You know, I yeah, am a strong believer in technology. Right. Uh, that have been the driving force in whatever I do. When I came back to Africa, again, I was lucky. I had a lot of series of UN consultancies to work with a number of African countries right. to develop their ICT policy. Mm. So I worked with Rwanda, Ghana, Nigeria, Burundi, Ethiopia, a number of African countries. That was the beginning of the whole issue of ICT for development, right. which I strongly believe in, that if we are going to move, those were the early 2000s. The vision at that time, that by year 2020, which we are in now, vision 2020. most of the African countries can leapfrog from agriculture nations to information knowledge economy. That's the whole idea. Mm. So I was in the forefront of that. Right. So 
that gave me a lot of satisfaction that yes, something can be done in the country. It just it was just a coincidence. Right. At the time I came back was a time when technology yes, well, was was picking up. So that was a lot of work to do. Right. And uh, getting the UN to support the activity was great. And then after a while, I still think I had to go back to my academic role, mm. job. Right. And there were options when I came home. Uh, while still doing my UN job. I decided to start from a private university to assist them to set up their own computer science department that was uh, that's Valley View University. I was there for a while. Mm. And then a couple of us came together, myself, Professor Alote, Professor Japon and so forth, to say that, look, most of us went to top universities abroad. And these are big names. Yes, yeah. big names. We think, we think the original idea of AIT was not to have a university, but to have a PhD group mm. for us to train PhDs. But it metamorphosed into to, uh, a university mm. idea. So we thought that we must give back. Right. And we think that we can set up a university of the same standard as the ones that we went to abroad. Professor Alote went to Princeton, right. Adam Mesa went to Cambridge. We all went to top universities. That was the beginning of AIT. And it just coincided that I was asked to be the first president. Yeah. Yes, that's the story. All right. In case you just tune in, this is an interesting session with Professor Clement Jijunu, who is the president of AIT. We'll go for a short break and when we come back, we'll continue with our discussion. Don't go away. Institute of Technology is a top-ranked private technology university in Ghana. The university offers world-class bachelor's, master's and PhD degree programs. I decided to come here while this place deals with a lot of technology. It's going to make my learning easier, not going to do a lot of paperwork, but more of this IT knowledge, making work faster and then better. The university has won a number of awards for providing world-class university education locally and internationally. Most universities, all you do is come for lectures, the lecture teaches and you're off. But AIT, the lecture will make sure that you do your quizzes, you do your assignments, and you make sure you get to the top. AIT, the university of the future. Welcome back to Impact mm. Stories and today we are privileged to be here with Professor Clement Jijono who is the president of um, AIT. And before we went on the break, uh, mm. Prof, we were talking about how you came up with AIT. We know you've done a lot looking at where we are, which is part of AIT, the building of AIT. Mm -hmm. What are some of your researches that when we pick because we know that Prof, you've written a lot and even getting to the professorship, you need a lot of recognized publications and researchers. Mm -hmm. But I want you to dig deeply and tell me which research do you think that when we pick or publication that when we pick, we will know that this is the embodiment of Professor Jijono. Mm -hmm. You would feel proud that even if no book of yours is mentioned, if we mention that you are okay wherever you are. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the research work, uh, I've gone through a number of phases. Mm. Study from my own PhD research work which was in uh, mathematical modeling. Mm. Published a couple of papers in that area, uh, in the area of optimization. Then it, ma it metamorphosis into, into serious uh, research in the area of uh, computer networks and internet systems and mm. protocols. Mm. And then uh, moving on from that, do some work in the area of artificial intelligence right. and expert systems. Right. And then move on to 
development of systems. My PhD is more into systems. Mm. So I like to call myself a systems person. Right. Yes, everything I look at in terms of systems. Mm. Um, done some few publications in that area too. Right. I've also published a number of textbooks, okay? Because as a, as a teacher, you, 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 you have to you have to write textbooks, mm. okay? So I've done some work in that area, in the area of computer science. My recent work, I'm not talking about the PhDs I've supervised. Right. They, they are in different, different areas, okay? The work that uh, I really think uh, made me quite uh, proud right. is the work that involved development of ideas and systems that will transform the economy of developing countries using technologies. Right. You know, when this, all these using technologies to develop started, the argument at that time was African countries are too late yeah. in the process. Yeah. We are still a primitive agriculture economies. When people like Al Gore, yeah. former vice president of the US and Clinton were talking about the information superhighway mm. to fast track their economies, African countries have what they call a lot of unfinished business. Right. Poverty, malnutrition, under development yeah. and so forth. Maternal mortality. Yeah, so this technology is not for them. They better finish their unfinished business right. before they think about using technology to develop. And uh, I'm proud to say that we were one of the first who would think that no, yeah. it's not true. Yeah. In fact, we need these technologies more than them. Yeah. In fact, they have a lot of legacy systems mm. that they need to fine-tune in order to use the technologies to move. We don't have legacy systems. We can start from scratch. So that requires developing systems, protocols about the way and that developed countries can use technology to transform. Right. I think I've done a lot of work in that mm, area. That's yeah. where I got the World Technology Award for. Right. That we manage to convince people that developing economies can live for. Mm. And that is a work I think do impact on a lot of people. Yeah. So would you say that would, that is your best award for you or you think there is well, one? Well, that... well it's, it's one of them. Yes. But to be recognized mm. at that time, far back in 2003, the World Technology Award you get nominations from all over the world. Mm. And then a short list is prepared. A short list of, I think, 10 or 15, 10 people, I can, I can recall. And out of that short list, one person is selected. Right. So which means that I competed with the best in the world. The best in the world. And at that time, no African have won that award. Right. So I, although other awards are also very distinct, I thought that award was a recognition yes. of the fact that we in Africa too can do have something to say, something to do about how we can develop using the technologies. Mm. Some of the ideas we propose at that time are still valid. Some of the systems we put in place are still valid. Mm. Some of the concepts we put in place are still valid. Yeah. And we are now in 2020, unfortunately, we have not reached the promised land that we thought we were rich. We haven't. Because a number of the African countries did not implement what we put in place. Mm. But a country like Rwanda comes to mind. You could see the, the great achievement they have, they, 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 they have, they have done was specifically due to that. Mm. So uh, I was not surprised when Kagame was also given the, the same, same award. award. Right. Um, so, and Tony Blair of the UK also yep. won the award. Yeah. Macron won an award, Al yeah. Gore won an award, the same award. So yeah. that I think it puts that you on the echelon. 
where that yes. we Africans to yeah. we can resolve our our problems. Yeah. Um, so that for me is, is an honor. But are you ever going to stop writing? Because <laughs> we know as academia that is what you love. But do you think you would one day say, okay, I'm not writing again. I just want to rest. You know what I want to do is to. What I want to do most is to write. Mm. Is when you become president of a university. I remember a colleague of mine said, I want you to become president or vice chancellor. You become an administrator. Mm -hmm. There's no time to write. Yeah. He told me this way back before I even thought of being a university president. Mm. So I, that, that's sticking in my mind. Right. Now, one thing I'm going to do, even when I become a president or vice chancellor, I will continue to write. Mm. What I'm really itching for is to move on mm. and, and do my writing. So I will right. stop writing. I really, because we need to communicate our ideas. Right. And so even this. here is limiting your writing. Oh, yes, of course. The university <laughs> administration will limit your writing. Yeah. You still times once in a while to write. Mm. I'm still writing. There right. are a lot of things I'm writing. Yeah. But I think we must write. Right. And, uh, and beyond computers, computer science, I, I wrote a number of inspirational and motivational books. Yep. Because I strongly believe that our people need to be transformed. Yeah. Um, so I wrote those books and I have a number of them in the pipeline. Uh, interesting, you know, we also now have AIT TV. Yes. So we, there are some of my ideas that you are, put are putting, there. Putting, putting out there. So I'll continue to write, certainly, yes, I will. Yeah. Um, what I wanted to ask was that you spearheaded technology when we talk about Africa, how we, we are incorporating um, technology. You brought it down to Ghana. Mm -hmm. We have AIT. I wanted to know how working from the scratch to the top to even becoming the president of AIT. No, we're not there yet. We are still, it's still work in progress. Yes. <laughs> how, how, okay. Yeah, it's still, work still in progress. In progress. <laughs> yes. But how has the journey been for you? Because this can only be peculiar to you. And you know how it is. And so can you walk us through the journey a bit of AIT to what it is now? Okay. AIT, as I said, the idea was not just my idea. Yeah. It's a couple of us right. uh, who came together to think that we must set this up. So I must give that credit to my other colleagues. Uh, unfortunately, Professor Alote yeah. Uh, passed away recently. He was yeah. one of the key driving force. Very passionate about this idea. The, because we are quite clear about what we want to achieve at the, uh, from the very beginning, mm. and we have s such a powerful people behind the, the dream, it was not that easy. You don't know, it was not that difficult. To, to put it to, together. To, to put it together right. and, and trying to convince people that it's doable. Right. And also giving the names behind it also help in building the brand. Mm. That these are serious people and they are going to do something good. And I must say the difficulty came in the area of bringing faculty and convincing them that this is the AIT way. Right. And also uh, the students mm. to convince them that this is a different place. This is the dinner room and this is what we're doing. In the beginning, it was a little bit difficult. And then also, of course, uh, building an infrastructure. Right. Because we didn't get a, a dime from anywhere, you know, for government or international agencies. We had to do everything from scratch ourselves. So building infrastructure uh, was a challenge mm. at, at the very beginning. I do recall when our first campus, we used a number of containers. Mm. Uh, mm. Yeah, yeah, prefab. Right. It was quite interesting. We still have the pictures mm. to show that is how our beginning uh, was a humble one. But thanks, thank God, but now we, we do have impressive campuses, mm. uh, all due to the, 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 the zeal and effort of our board, our faculty, and our students. I think we have not craft a niche for ourselves. Mm. We're not there yet, 
as I said, is a word in progress. And uh, the COVID also proved that w what we have been preaching along is, is, is right. It's relevant. In fact, one of the reasons behind setting up AIT is to prove the concept that we have been preaching, mm. that we can develop using technology. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a key component of development in this, in this day and age is human resources. Right. Not mm -hmm. gold, not copper, but not timber. It's the human because it's a knowledge economy. So AIT is also an idea that it is doable. Yeah. You can produce the human resources that we need in order to transform our economies. Right. So it's quite uh, uh, work in uh, progress. Yes, yes, it's work in progress, and uh, we have also motivated other universities. Right to look our way and see how. So we share a lot of our systems, our ideas with other universities, mm. with other colleagues, both in Ghana and outside. Yeah. That is doable and uh, we have done it. Um, and we think that we can compete mm. with one of the, the top universities mm. anywhere in the world. Right. Because the system they are using they is the, the same, same system. system. During the COVID period, I did a lot of reading around yeah. to see how the U.S. universities are faring, how the European universities are faring, and how the Asian universities are faring. I must tell you, you uh, were proud. We, we are proud that we, yeah. are, we, are, we are there with them. Yeah. We are ready, and uh, we think this is the future. Right. And when the COVID period ends, there's a lot which is also going to change, change. at AIT. Yeah. So certainly, we, we think that we're not there yet, but I think we are on the road. Yeah. You look so young. How are you staying fit? You need to keep yourself fit. Right. In order to be able to be productive. Mm. So I take keep fit very serious. Okay. Uh, the mind also, you have to keep it very fit. I right. take that also very serious. I encourage that at, at AIT. Mm. So, I like walking a lot. Right. I've climbed the mountain, I've had two, three times. Hmm. Um, Amy and I are probably going to climb the Kilimanjaro sometime. That's great. So you need to be fit. Yeah. So who is beside you who is making us see this ever young um, Professor Jujunu? And who are your kids? I have four kids. Right. Three girls, one boy. The eldest one is uh, married. Mm. Uh, just, uh, just spoke to her. She's not busy yet. She's based in Jamaica. Right. Uh, that's where she resides. The, 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 the second one is based in, in Ireland. She's also going to school there. Mm. The two young ones are with us here. Yeah. Um, so I have three boys and one girl. Uh, three girls um, and one boy, boy. Right. and uh, the two are here, they are young, right. and the others are abroad, right. yes. Um, what were your favorite food? What would oh. you see Prof eating? Uh, yeah. My favorite food have changed. Mm. You know, when we are growing up, uh, you always eat almost the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, now, because of traveling to China a lot, I now believe in eating varieties of yeah. food, mm. uh, the, veg the vegetables, the fruit, and so forth. Yeah. So I paid a lot of attention to what I eat. But in the African food, right. I think it had to be okra soup. Okay. And uh, bamboo or something like that. Yes, right. certainly, yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, who are you currently listening to when we talk about music? Who is your favorite artist that you are listening to? Uh, music? Yes, music. I like I like a lot of different type of music. Mm. Uh, the reggae side, I like uh, Jimmy Cliff and uh, and Bob Marley. Right. And uh, I, I like uh, uh, gospel music, also. Obviously. Yeah, they, they are inspirational. Mm. And I also like uh, country music. Mm. Because they talk about life. Right. Yes. So I have a variety. I love music. I have a lot of records, a lot of musical systems. So right. I do. In fact, 
uh, I have a music system in my office here. Okay. Because you are coming. Yeah. I always have music in the background when I'm working. Yeah. Because you are coming, I have to switch it off. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Do you I enjoy music. sports? Oh, yes. Which one? Uh, football. Football, your favorite but team. But I'm not good, uh, yeah. good at uh, playing it. Uh, your favorite play, team? It's uh, Manchester United. Okay, the Red Devils. Yes. So, <laughs> the big and final question for us, and then the reason why we do this, is yes. we want to know, as Professor Clement did you know, within yourself, do you think you are a fulfilled person? On the issue of fulfilled life for me, it's a work in progress. Mm. On the recreation side, I'm doing some work on that, mm. so that not to work out all the time. On the exercise side, I think I'm, 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 I'm okay. I think on the healthy eating side, mm. I'm doing some work yeah. on that. So for me, it's work in progress. Um, you can't say that you are, you are done yet. Yeah. Yes, so I'm, I'm working at it. So finally, and we are out of here, Yes. what do you want us to remember you for? That's a, that's a tough one. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be remembered. Put it another round. I have a quote. I've mm -hmm. written a lot of quotes, over 2,000 quotes. Let me just tell you one. That is good to give people gifts. But the best gift you can ever give anybody to develop that person right. or give him the opportunity to develop that person. That explains why I am in academia, because mm. academia is about developing your people. Right. That's why I, I wrote so much about how African economies can develop, because it's about developing your people. So I want to be remembered that I play my little part in developing people. Right. I think that is the greatest gift you can ever give to anybody. Aye. Because somebody helped to develop me, I must give back by developing Aye. people. So Aye. I'm in a developing of people business. Aye. That is what I want to remember for. All right. Thank you, Pro, for joining us. Thank it has been much. an insightful conversation with you, yes. knowing your journey yes. through life and then through to now. Yes. So we are grateful for your time. Yes. We are grateful that you answered our calls, yes. <laughs> that we should come today and then yes. know more about you. Fantastic. So we are grateful. This has been Impact Stories on AETV, and we were privileged to have with us Professor Clement Gijono, who is the president of Accra Institute of technology. My name is Irene Dufiade and I have been your host for today's discussion. Do you stay tuned.